Hello everyone, it's Physical Labs, and I'm back yet again, playing Dire Wolf 20. In between episodes, I did a little bit, not too much. Let's take a look at that, get ready to her. Uh, first off, I changed my little pillar into a 3x3, because it, quite frankly, it was driving me insane. Uh, I have it set up so all three sides have terminals, so I made a bunch of terminals. And each one has a crafting terminal, a interface terminal, and a padded terminal, all in the same layout. So hopefully I'm not running around the thing in circles anymore, we'll see. Uh, my brain might take a while to kick in. Uh, <laughs> upgraded the bulk of my machines up to resident now, so we were able to do that on AutoCraft now. I had to process a bunch of uh, platinum, but not a big deal. And uh, I have these here. These are just casings from actually the additions. They're just decoration. <laughs> they're actually meant for the lava factory, <laughs> but they're actually not too bad priced either. So I went here, made some of these. We had a bunch of these for free early on, so it didn't even matter. I did have to make some minori, but not a big deal. But you get 32 per, so, I mean... Two or three recipes and I'll have enough for my area. So that's pretty cool. I just like the way it looked. I was also having a problem with blocks. So I was kind of looking for a block with this kind of edge on it. Because um, I, I have, you know, in here I have, you know, this is a cable facade. And there's probably other ones out of the covers. Well, not in this section. Some of them have both though. So they weren't all lining up the textures when I was trying different blocks. So I found this one. I was just like, that'll line up because the edges are all the same. And uh you can see here, it still doesn't look right just because something's wrong. <laughs> they don't line up perfectly, that is for sure. And, uh, but uh lines up good enough for me. Uh, I guess the only other thing I really did was uh, work on the outside of this building. So I'm, I've got three floors done. I guess three floors. I just got to get that bottom one on the outside done, and then we're finished. Just kind of doing it slowly over time. And uh, that's about it. I think that's pretty much everything I did. Um... What I want to get to today, though, I guess first off, I want to work on wireless power and upping it. Because our wireless power is actually pretty miserable right now. So I want to get to power cells. Um, the RF transmitters were cool, but we're reaching the point where we're going to need more power. So yeah, we're going to get into this. And we're probably going to automate the creation of Prismarine as well through the Atomic Reconstructor. Might as well get that done. Probably do that first. So let's go and uh, take a look, actually, at the recipe. So Prismarine. Prismarine. Go to here, go to here. Nether quartz and reconstructor equals prismarine for 30,000 RF. Um, it says CF, but same thing. Um, so we're going to automate that. We're going to need a interface. Apparently we have one. We're going to need a precision dropper. We may or may not have everything for this. We'll see. There we go. There we go. And a dropper. I guess we do. Oh, no, we don't. I think I got palace and blocks that we found early on. We do. Sweet. So we'll do that. Bam. And bam. So that's pretty cool. And anything else we need? I guess we need some cables, obviously. Some flukes. So we'll grab that. And I think everything else is over there, right? Oh, we'll need a range collector. So, um, ranged. There we go. Grab one of these puppies. So we're going to take this jazz. We're going to run over here. Um... That's fine. That's in pulse mode, right? Which is what we want. Uh, we're going to have to change this here. So let's get that. Uh, we're going to grab that. I guess throw that right there. Then we're going to put a pressure plate on top of this. The reason I'm using an uh, automatic precision dropper is one, it's great because it automatically responds to redstone signal. So if I kind of throw something on there right now, it'll uh, disable it. So it's set to deactivation mode, where it'll automatically, right now it's turned on. So if I put an item in there, it'll, it'll kind of throw it up there. The second that item ends on the pressure plate, the pressure plate adds a redstone signal and deactivates it. So it can only send one item at a time. So that's kind of why I'm using that. Um, this can go pretty much anywhere, I think. Where do we want to put this? Let's uh, put that there. Let's put you there. I'm going to grab one more item just to make item collection really easy. Well, it's going to be easy with the range collector. Either way, we will have to set a whitelist, but that's not a big deal. Um, let's also grab uh, some quartz because we're going to have to need we're going to have to need it for the filter. Great English. Anyway, let's grab that. Grab a transfer node. Kind of grab that. I'll just use that to move the items. It doesn't have to be super fast. It's not as fast with this setup anyway, not particularly, but at the same time, it's fast enough for me. I'm actually going to break that because it'll just make this easier. Throw you there. Put a transfer node on it. Oops. There we go. It's on there. And then the interface. 
And then again, hit it in the back. And that thing's already almost automated, so let's grab some of this cable. Let's go over here. Bam. And uh, that should pretty much be it. So let's go here. Let's grab that. Let's throw that there. Bam. Going to set this whitelist uh, to only pick up Prism Braid. So it should pick up the Prism Braid now. Boom. Should end up in the interface and back in the system. And, uh, that's exactly what we want. So let's go and make a recipe here. So we would have to go here. Let's grab some Prism. Here we go. Get rid of you. And set that on processing. Because we only need one right now. That, that equals that. And that actually, oops, I do not want to do that, is the recipe. Simple as that. And I've already got this near full. It's not going to take long to fill this first tower. And that's what? Eight uh, interfaces <laughs> where the recipes do not go very far once you get to, you know, make them recipes at all whatsoever. Uh, anyway, let's go to uh, Priz. I just want to make sure the recipe works. I'm pretty sure it will. Oh, boom. Let's try and make it 10. Let's see. Okay, something's wrong. Did I not link that up? It has channels. It has that. Oh, I put the recipe in the wrong place. Why do I keep doing that? I have been doing that in this pack quite a bit. I know better. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I think that's about the third or fourth time in this pack I've done that. Anyway, it should start shooting them out right away. It's like, it was waiting for the recipe. And there you go. It's just making it. It's going to make all 10. All 10 should get picked up. And no, this is not the fastest way. You can make this so set it up so it kind of drops all the items really, really quick. I actually prefer this setup, especially in packs like this. But anyway, it's good enough for me. And uh, yeah, that's the thing. Anyway, we have our quartz. Let's go to uh, power cells. And actually, let's just straight up make the recipes for these. So power cell. We're going to need to make the power cell cards and the power cells. So that is definitely a thing. Let's go there. Bam. I'll hand the cards. I'll get into what they're about in a bit. Let's make one of those. I guess we'll get those into the system real quick. There we go. And there we go. Uh, we'll need to make what they called machine frames. Make some of these. Let's make like four to get us started. There we go. And uh, these these things are pretty cool. They move. They just move power wirelessly and uh, relatively effectively too. You get a little bit of power loss, but it's not too bad. Let's go. I guess we have everything. I thought I was going to have to do another step. But uh, that makes things really easy. And let's try making four of these puppies, I guess. Let's go one, two, three, four. That's five. Let's try four. There we go. And uh, we'll need the cards as well. There we go. And that's all done. Fantastic. So we already have automated, you know, power cells, which is really good wireless power especially later on you could actually get higher versions of these i think these ones hold a million uh i forget what these ones hold might tell us they are four million and everyone is linked if they're on the same power card so it's kind of cool how that works i'll throw them down we're gonna get them all linked up anyway i'm just gonna use one channel so these are what they look like uh all you do to kind of get them linked up is throw a card in there i think that linked it up right yeah linked id one uh then we could throw one in there, they'll make the same ID. I think you do in stacks too. And there we go, they're all linked to ID one. So if I go to each one of these now, and uh, throw them in there, they'll all be ID one. And that is exactly what we want, which is pretty cool. Um, and uh, this is for setting the sides. So if I wanna set all the sides to one thing, I can set them all the in, all the out. Uh, there's also a smart wrench. Smart wrench, grab one of these puppies, bam. And this is if you want to do kind of the sides manually, right? So just uh, switch it around. This is the main tool for RF tools. Uh, but most wrenches work with the mod, so it's kind of nice like that. But uh, all we need to do now is basically go and take this and pipe it into our normal power. And uh, then we can take those other ones, put whatever we want, and uh, have wireless power, which is actually fantastic. Let's go here. I guess we'll go inside. Bam. And steal ourselves a connection. And these things are a little weird too. So the power in them, they are per side. They're actually per side. So on link, I guess we'll connect it straight to a cell. No, I want to connect it on wire. Anyway, they're per side. So these things can move, I believe 
I believe it's 5,000 per side, but they have, you could access five sides basically and uh, move 25,000. So pretty cool like that. Uh, we'll set that to in. It should start getting power. You see their in input, output 5,000 RF, but it's literally per, so per side. Uh, once we set down one to output, I, actually if we do it right here, uh, you'll see here side output cost, 0%. That is only because this is a single block. The, long, the further a block gets away from the power cell that is sending it power, or, you know, the other power cells, um, the larger that uh, output cost is going to get. Um, so we'll kind of see when we get over to our main dimension um, how much power that is. But right now, effectively, we can move 4,000. I think it's 4,000 hardened flux ducts. Are they 4,000? They might be the limit on them, which we could change later on. I'm not in a big rush now. 4,000 is more than we're producing, so <laughs> I'm not really concerned about it. Yeah, 4,000 RF, so effectively that could move 4,000 plus its loss. Let's go here, or minus its loss, I should say. I just want to get these upgraded and then get some upgrades in these puppies as well. So we can actually get these up to full speed, which is going to be pretty cool. Uh, I guess we don't, well, we are going to need that to get out, I guess. A little tiny little hobbit hole. There we go. Should be one under there. Can't really tell. Yes, it is there. Okay. I guess we could just do that, do that, and that. And then grab one of these power cells, I guess, and uh, throw it there. Boom. Set it to output. And uh, that's now getting power. That's awesome. And uh, that'll add, every time I put one of these down, it's adding one more million to our buffer, too. So you can see it holds three million now. They're all linked up. So they're all the same thing. It just sees it has one kind of unit. And that's pretty cool. Let's go to uh, thermal. I want to speed up our machines, right? Especially those pulverizers and stuff. Get them up to the maximum speed. I'm trying to remember which one is the speed one. Oh, machine processing. It was this one. Okay, so let's uh, automate that recipe real quick. Let's go here. Bam. I love this point in a, in a pack. When you just feel like you could just automate any recipe at a whim. It's just like, I'm going to automate this now. And there's nothing you could do to stop me. <laughs> Let's actually go back to that. Throw one in the system. And that should be that. There we go. Throw those in there. And this will get a little expensive with gold pretty quick. But we could put up to four of these into a machine. I'm not going to go that crazy yet. I'll do that later on probably. But uh, for now, I'm probably going to do two per. So I'm going to make... What is that? Twelve? Let's make twelve. What are they called again? Coils. Reception coils. Got to remember that. Transmission are the power ones, right? Let's go to 12. And uh, just get that going. That should only take a couple seconds, right? Yeah. Let's grab our coils. Bam. And I think we can just right-click these ones in, right? Awesome. <laughs> there we go. Let's try something here. Let's grab an ore that I'm not really processing right now. I just want to see how fast it goes. Let's try uranium. There we go. Uranium. And just see how fast this is because this was so slow at one point. Not perfect. You know what I mean? We definitely can get it faster. Uh, but not bad at all. I'm not going to complain about that. It is up to 180 RF, uh, which is definitely a problem. Well, not a problem. Definitely a reason why I upgraded my power because otherwise we would have been 100 short. So... That handles that, and I'll be able to do a whole bunch of that, kind of in between episodes and as needed. Okay, the next thing I think I want to get to work on is, well, I want to work toward cloches. I want to get cloches. They are from Thermal. They're good for growing food, really amazing for growing food and plants and stuff like that. We don't have a proper food source. I also don't have a proper source of, say, sugarcane, stuff like that. I need to get these. But that, they kind of changed them in 112. So in 112, you now need to go through the engineer's workbench, which means, yeah, we need treated wood. We need treated wood before anyway, but uh, you just, it has an extra step now. So uh, we're going to need a coke oven. That is how we make that treated wood. It is made from uh, creosote, which is produced. Uh, creosote, does it actually show you how to make creosote? Yes, right here. Coke oven is a byproduct from putting coal into a coke oven and making a block of coal coke. Coal coke is used as either a fuel or running the blast furnace, which actually makes steel, which is something we're going to need in time anyway, so we might as well start the process, right? Uh, we are going to need a bunch of clay, though, I believe. I believe it takes 36, I think. I'll do this, kind of get this smelting up. And I should have did the test on this now, I think of it, but too late. 
Oh, that's good and fast. And the furnaces are very fast. I like that. Two more, though, actually. Pretty crazy. Anyway, uh, you need 27 blocks. It is a multi-block. I'm just going to do a temporary setup up here. Then probably move it later on because I still have no clue where I'm putting my immersive stuff. Uh, let's go to... Uh, is it Coke? Where's the bricks? I don't want that. These ones. Coke bricks. Yes, we need this jazz here. Uh, we need sandstone? Okay. Now, apparently, we're making sandstone, too. So, uh, sand. Here we go. So, we're going to need nine recipes, I believe. Oh. So, let's do that. Boom. I love that they changed it. This recipe, I think it, what did it make? It made like two each or four each. I can't remember. But you always ended up with an extra block when you made your multi-block. They actually changed it to three. So, it doesn't do that anymore, which is actually really nice. Anyway, let's grab that. And there's our 27. Like I said, I'm going to do a temporary setup here. Probably just throw it kind of somewhere all willy-nilly. And didn't move it. Once we got some creosote. And move forward. I'm going to have to make some kind of tank for this or something. But that's not a big deal. Don't even know what tanks we have in this pack, to be honest. Let's go here. And go there. So that's the coke oven. We're going to grab some coal. There we go. And... I guess we don't need that much. Let's grab like 10 blocks. Should be fine for now. And boom. I'm gonna throw that in there. That's gonna slowly make creosote. It is not fast by any means. This is a several minute process. So especially with a block, I think it's gonna probably take about 10 minutes. So we're gonna kinda let that go and probably work on something else uh, in between that. So um, I wanna do something for fun actually. It is slow, okay. Just making sure it was still slow. Make sure nothing changed. Um, I want to do something for fun here. So I don't want to. I'm so tired of using these here. These elevators. I use them in every pack. Everyone uses them in every pack. Because, well, they're fast. They're good. They're cool. They're fantastic. I don't want to use them anymore. Not in this pack. Let's try. I want to use Viducts. They are from Thermal. And they're a way of moving around your base. Which is kind of cool. Because you kind of go through a pipe. And you can kind of set locations and stuff like that. I thought I'd try them out. But we need to make this, uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this, Zephyrium Erothium, I guess. I'll pretend. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to have to make that, which I can't remember what it was. Oh, it's the Erothium Dust, which I think we can make really easy, I think. Why am I typing it in there? I have no idea. That's an uh, arrow. There we go. So we'll make some of that. What are we actually missing? Blitz Powder. That is not a problem. We have tons of that. And now I'm going to end up with a lot of these recipes. It takes materials I'm not really worried about, though. I think it was mostly copper and lead. So I'm not really worried about wasting those recipes. Those are things that usually end up with tons of. So did I just... Yeah, I just made a ton of that. Uh, we need to smelt this down somewhere. And I actually set up another fluid transposer and magma crucible. This is going to kind of be the on-demand one. So whenever I just kind of need to do something, I'll just come here and do it. Um, let's go... Is that on? It is on output, right? No, oh, it's already good to go. Fantastic. Okay. So let's make some of those viaducts. And I might actually set up this recipe. Because, well, probably going to be doing a lot. There we go. Oh, that's not the recipe at all. Let's go over here. There we go. There's other components too. So there's like long range ones and long range linking. I'm not going very long range, so I don't care how fast they are. You're going to see that they're actually a pretty good speed anyway. And when you travel long distance with these things in fast speed, you actually get clipping. It just it just happens. So I, they just made them too fast. Anyway, let's do that. Let's go here and do that. Bam. Let's do uh, some viaducts. And I have no clue how I'm making. Let's start with like 40 just to kind of get an idea how it works. Oh, do I not have a bronze ticket recipe? Let's see here. I thought I had bronze. I do, but it's the wrong one. I didn't order it, right? And there we go. We got the proper recipe now. Hopefully this one works. We'll see. Uh, where am I here? I'm still going around the edge. See? <laughs> it's in muscle memory now. It's going to take me a while to remember. Anyway, let's go here. Let's go to uh, Vile Duct. No, let's go here, I guess. And go to Vile Duct. Go to here. Make about 40 of these puppies. And there we go. No problem now. It's going to have to craft some of the hardened glass, but uh, that shouldn't be too bad. Where am I making hardened glass? Over here. Do I need to speed up that machine right away? Is kind of the question I'm asking. Probably should. 
<laughs> let's go to coils and let's add two. Oh, I haven't upgraded the power over there yet. No, I think of it. And this might be a mess. I'm going to upgrade power here. I guess I could do it really easy right here. That's easy. It's going to be a mess down here. I'm going to have to replace those with uh, single and plated. Boom. Oh. I guess we can just throw that. It doesn't really matter where this goes once it's set up. Set that to out. Oh, I guess now I could upgrade it. But uh, it's already almost done, so I'm not going to bother. <laughs> right this second. Viaduct. There's 40. Fantastic. So I'm going to run these up through the ceiling. Actually, let's go downstairs first. I figured I'd do it kind of like right here, maybe. Let's try it like here. Where's that put us? Seems good enough. Let's uh kind of go back up. Oh. What? Oh, they're untreated. I forgot they had to be treated. Uh, we need to treat these <laughs> with the, zip the erothium that we actually made. Uh, let's head over here. I think it only took 100 millibuckets each, so we should be able to do a bunch of these really quick, which is not too bad. Pretty sweet. Boom. Me trying to jump steps. Got 40 viaducts. And I had a hole right here, right? Boom. Let's uh, kind of go back up. Then we'll work back down and back up. And all that jazz. There we go. So I'd probably have it somewhere about here. If you right click on one of these with a wrench, It'll kind of turn the side there. I'm going to go downstairs, kind of set the other side as well. So let's go down here and pick a direction. So maybe right there. I'm probably going to do one in each corner too. I'm just going to kind of have them running all through the base. It's kind of the plan. Uh, anyway, let's go. If I right click on this now, it's asking me where to go. So it's saying, you know, go to that network. But I think we can name this. Yeah, let's name this one. Let's name this one controller. This will all be our controller floor, right? Bam. You can add items here, too, and kind of give them icons. So do I actually want to give it an icon? I, I would probably have to make something like a controller. <laughs> Maybe I'll do that later. But uh, it'll give it the icon. It will just appear right here. So if I'll, I'll kind of show you here. If I put it with this block, bam. There you go. It shows it. Right? It doesn't actually use the block. Well, if it doesn't use the block, I'm going to make it a controller. <laughs> Oh, it won't be a powered controller, though. Nah. I could do the Futura one. I'll do the Futura one later on. There's a Futura kind of mock version of that controller. Uh, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, we'll not worry about that right now. Um, but I should be able to go up to Unnamed. It just shoots me up, right? And that's what it does. It just moves you around like that, which is pretty cool. But I can go back down and go to controller. I can move around my base this way. I figured it'd just be a neat way to do it. So I'm probably going to end up putting these all through my base. <laughs> they're made out of materials. I mean, the recipe is just this and some lead, I think. No, not in Darium. Hardened glass is lead and obsidian. So the obsidian is pretty much free. Uh, lead, I mean, you get so much of it in a pack, it doesn't even matter. So it's a thing. Anyway, might as well get this one last line done. I'm not going to do down to the tree farm yet because I haven't really sorted out what I'm going to do there. Uh, maybe somewhere like right here. Boom. Yeah. There you go. And I should be able to take this one, config it. Let's name this one. What is this one? We'll call it, uh, I forget what this thing's called. No, let's call it, uh, let's call it AutoCraft. There we go. Let's see here. AutoCraft or just, uh, assemblers. There we go. Assemblers. Bam. I could grab assembler, throw it in there and use that, you know, kind of the image, which will make kind of cool. So I can go down to unnamed, bam, which is our main floor, and go back up. It takes no power, no nothing. So they're pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to configure this one and just call it main. Probably the best bet. There we go. And uh, that's pretty cool. So I, like I said, I'm going to be moving those all around the base. And okay, we got our first five buckets, so we should be good to go. So, but uh, I should be able to throw that in there. That's going to fill that up. But I'm also going to hook a tank up to it, uh, just in case I'm not around and stuff like that. And uh, just invert that. It's weird when you invert these, or it, when you try to place these onto anything with GUI, it opens it up, but it still places the uh, transfer nodes. Just weird how it works. But anyway, that'll pull the uh, creosote out of it as it, you know, is produced. There we go. Let's uh, make two sets at least. Kind of get us going. And there you go. So let's look at what we need to make. So the thing, thing we, I think, is it the work table? 
no, not the work table. That is forestry. Uh, let's go to, uh, what am I trying to make? Cloche? Let's look at the thing that I need to make right here. Bam. So we need to make the engineer's workbench. We also need to make the proper blueprint. I'm just going to do that right now. That one's the vacuum tube. That's the one we need. So let's grab that. Let's go here. Uh, we need an iron mechanical component. I have nothing. <laughs> let's grab uh, some iron, I guess. Grab four of that. Actually, let's grab... How many of these does it make? We're going to make two at least to get started, I guess. So let's uh, get that done. Bam. Do I have my hammer on me? I do. So let's do that. Isn't that all it is? Can you not make plates like that? Does it actually have to be dust? No. I was going to say, there's no way it's that picky. Uh, iron plate. That's the wrong one. Plate. Iron plate. Oh, we can use the forge hammer. Let's use that. <laughs> I just don't want to have to go use the compactor right now. Anyway, I probably would have saved time, but I don't even have it set up right now. Let's go here, because I was going to automate it and never got to it. Let's do that. One, two... You know what? Let's make a bunch. We'll need them over time anyway. Iron is pretty popular. There we go. Let's go to uh, Cloche and see what we need here. Not a closer. Boom. Let's grab some iron mechanicals. There we go. What? Isn't that what it was? Oh, it was in the corners. Anyway, let's go there. Let's try the engineer's wick branch. We'll need one of these. So throw that in there. Might as well have the treated wood in there as well. And I guess we just need those now, right? So we can grab the uh, workbench. There we go. Cool. Take you. Throw you right here for right now. I think we're going to need some wire cutters, right? Or are they called clippers? Right? Shears, engineers, wire cutters. So let's grab some wire cutters. Boom. Bam. Grab a set of those. And the wires. Can we make those? I can't remember if we can make those with uh, igots or not. Go here. Here. Is that copper? Yeah, it doesn't look like we can. So we're going to have to turn those into plates as well. Uh, where's my forge hammer? Forge here. Bam. Bam. It won't let me make copper plates. Are you serious? Why are you so difficult? Thermal. Yeah. Oh no, I could do it like that. Maybe not? <laughs> Why is it being difficult? There you go. That and that. There we go. Then we should be able to cut these, right? Yes. Yes. But I think we need two more. So I totally derp. But anyway, at least I know. It's weird that you can't do the iron with the engineer's hammer, actually. Must be no recipe and uh, thermal, not thermal, uh, immersive that has that. I guess. Uh, wrong thing. There we go. Guess we just do that. That. There we go. I think we have everything there. Uh, we should be able to take that, throw that there. Should be able to look at the tube. So it needs one red stained glass, two copper wire, and a redstone. So I guess we need uh, red stained glass. Which is a little odd, but uh, we'll deal with it. So we need two, we got two wires, and we need two redstone. It's weird that they add this step, but it's nice, because Cloche is, I don't know if it still is, I think it got changed, but uh, it was very argumentally uh, extremely overpowered. But uh, we'll see how it is. There we go. We've got six vacuum tubes, so we should be good to go there. Especially when you're dealing with like, mystical agriculture and stuff. It was just pretty nuts. Anyway, that, that. So we're good there. We could put it in lots of spots up here. Maybe against this back wall or something. Something like that. Yeah, that'll work. Let's go like right here. Boom, boom. Let's throw a transmitter around here somewhere. Doesn't even matter. You should start getting power. They are. Except for our, I already forgot something. I need to feed them water. And it's easier to do it from the back, I believe. I think it's the only place now that I look at it. So don't, don't listen to me. Let's grab our sink. Kind of go like that. I am going to need a servo. Of course I don't have one. But at least we can get downstairs really easy. <laughs> I 
I really like these viaducts, they're pretty cool. Let's go here, go to servo. Bam, bam. There we go, and assemblers. Sweet. Hook up two of these uh, little fluid ducties. Bam, bam. I already remembered something else that I forgot, which is fantastic, because we need dirt. There we go. That should be fine. Uh, let's set it to here. And these should start filling up with water. Fantastic. And okay, we just need to set these up. So one of them is going to need dirt. The one with dirt is going to be the coffee seeds. And that should start growing coffee right away. Uh, and we're going to throw the sand in this one and make a sugar cane. And boom. We should be able to make espresso as that gets stuff, which is fantastic. You should be able to take drawers, throw those on there, and it should auto-export every time it grows once. You kind of watch them grow. It actually looks really cool with the sugar cane because you kind of watch it go all the way to the top. And bam. You also get a byproduct of seeds usually, I think. Yes. But I think even if it buffers full of seeds, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? It just kind of keeps pumping the stuff out. At least that's how it was in 110. We'll see. We may have to come back and filter items out. But uh, for right now, um, until that becomes a problem, I'm not going to worry about it. But you can see how quick they are. We already got six of that, four of that. And, uh, yeah, pretty quick. Anyway, let's, uh, I guess throw you right there. I guess throw you right here. And grab a ender chest. Oh, I need a key, too. Do I have my key in here? I'm falling. <laughs> I'm such a derp. I need to fix those holes. That's why I want those viaducts. Oh, I need to lock this first, right? That's what I was going for. And then just throw that there. Now, I may move this, but our sugar cane's going there now. We just need a home for sugar cane. And a home for the coffee beans, right? Although it looks like we... Actually, why isn't it pulling coffee beans? Oh, it's pulling them in order. Okay. May have to do a faster... Actually, we won't have to do a faster extraction. That'll be quick enough. And this should just keep going forever. So, um, I'm going to take that stuff, though, and give it a home. And, uh, actually... You know what? I'm going to leave it in there. We're going to deal with that next episode. I think we'll kind of auto-craft espresso. Actually, I don't want to auto-craft espresso. Now that I think of it, we'll end up with so much that I don't want to deal with it. I'm going to grab you, though. I don't know why silicon's in there. Anyway, let's go and uh, go down to controller real quick. Give these a uh, place in a drawer. Then it should be able to go past more than what's in those drawers up there and what's in the drawers down here. You know what I mean? And uh, these ones are seen by the system. And, uh, yeah. Just have a giant buffer of espresso and sugar. Sugar is nice to have anyway, because it's used for a lot of things. Uh, coffee beans. Where's the other thing? Sugar sure, cane. Okay. There we go. Guess I can grab this here. Throw that in there and there. And that should start filling up. And uh, that's that. So we have we have our closures now. We have food secured finally. Uh, we also took care of power, and uh, we got some fancy fun viaducts. So that's pretty cool. Um, Pretty good, I think. I think we did good today. Kind of oddball one, but uh, they happen. Anyway, I think I'm going to wrap this one up here. So as always, if you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit that subscribe button. It's much appreciated. When well, you guys all have a good one, I'll see you guys next video. Later.